This is going to happen to every single yes. woman on the planet in one way or another. It's not something we can avoid. And because we can't avoid it, we should embrace it. And yeah. we should find, as we said, that what's right for us. But talk about it, talk about it, and talk about it. One doctor actually told me, here, I gave my wife this because I needed to survive this journey. Oh <laughs> my Oh gosh. my gosh! <laughs> yeah. No, uh, um, seriously? No. Yes, yes. Look, gonna, look, look. Let me get rid of the shine. There you go. I, I, I core, I love the fact that you're actually embracing this show and having a hot flush as we speak. Know. You know what I did? You know what I did to my husband? I was dying to say, you drugged him. You <laughs> drugged him, that's it. <laughs> Put him out of his misery I while you're I going to you, that ladies, <laughs> that bit is not going to be cut. Uh, but if it doesn't work, I'll be like you, Trudy, and I'll be like, give me all the drugs. <laughs> but okay. I swear I will. I'll, okay. I'll go in there and I'll say, please just... <laughs> There are billions of women passing through similar experiences all around the world, and for whatever reason, we often feel like we're alone. It's time to make a point of discussing these topics from a range of viewpoints. Women in the workplace, fertility, the menopause, women's rights, social media, sexuality, body image, politics, relationships, parenting, age, and women in their role today. These conversations surpass age, race, location. They are relevant to women everywhere. Welcome to The She Word. Conversations that women rarely have, but really should. For those willing to change the world one step at a time. For those dreaming of sustainable living. For those striving to find a healthier balance. For those always believing. Browns and Viridian. Love the planet, love yourself. Welcome to The Sheed Word, conversations that women rarely have but really should. And today's conversation is particularly important for me because it's one of the reasons that we started doing this show in the first place. Now, I'm also a tiny bit nervous because I have three firecracker guests today and I think it's going to be hard for me to keep control of everybody. But first of all, Moira, thank you so much. Moira Delia, I don't even need to introduce you. You are a TV personality, a presenter, you're a producer, but you're also an animal rights campaigner and doing a fantastic thank job you. there. Thank, thank you. you for being with me on this show. Also, Corrine, Corrine, hello. you of course, hello, darling. Hello. You are a, a radio DJ, presenter, voiceover artist, and of course a woman in set as well. Uh, but people would know you from being on radio for the past how many years? Twenty six years. There you go. If yes. you don't know Corrine's voice, you yes. don't know. You don't know 26 anything. Twenty six years. And Mariella. Mariella. I'm just the girl next door. <laughs> I don't believe that for one second. But Mariella, you are also a TV presenter, have been. You're a, a psychologist, a therapist, and you're also the one I'm most nervous about right now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was going to say, and you're also the eldest one. That's true. Well, you know, the one thing that we all have in common right now is, is that we are going through a phase of our life as a woman that affects every single woman on the planet. But it's the most untalked about topic I think I've ever come across. And I'll just let you know what my journey is. Uh, I've had for about a year, I've had leg pain, I've had joint pain. I started getting a little bit of weight gain and in a particular area on the front of my stomach and all of these sorts of things happened. But because I was on the pill and have been for 15 years, I didn't even think about that this could be the menopause. When I went to see a fantastic woman doctor, I said, I think maybe I've read something on Facebook that says I might have the menopause. And lo and behold, came off the pill and I was not just a little bit in the menopause, I was massively wow. in the menopause and had not prepared myself for it. But of course, I'm 48, you'd expect that this might happen. So whilst we talk about this topic of menopause, I'm going to ask each of you in turn just to let me know where you are on your menopause journey, starting with you, Moira. Yes. Lovely. Unfortunately, we all have to go through this and I'm glad, thank you, Trudy, for making this discussion possible because we, we hardly ever hear or educate ourselves about the subject. So I had a very early menopause, unfortunately, 
And I believe that it came along with a lot of stress that I was going through in my life. How old were you? I was around 46, 45, okay, 46. Right. So people first and foremost are shocked as soon as you say that, oh, I'm going through menopause, perimenopause, menopause. So that's the first thing that I would like to address. So wherever you are, in, in w what age you are in, you can get early menopause, menopause. It's nothing shocking about that. It's your system, you know? It's, it's a stage that we all have to go through. And this is what we're going to talk about because it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter whether you've had a hysterectomy or you avoid you. it. Whatever. Yes. It's going to affect every and, single woman. Um, denial is the next subject. This is another thing we should address during our discussion, but let me get back to, to, to my own experience with menopause. So I, I had very, very um, aggressive symptoms, so to say. I had those hot sweats, I had um, fatigue, I had those bad moods, which led to um, uh, lack of patience with people. You know, I couldn't even bear to explain uh, something I, I normally go... Through? To de into detail, so I had to tackle my symptoms before it was too late, you know, and even with my partner, I had to explain and get him into this um, next phase in life. Um, uh, now I'm 51, thankfully, and it's all under control, and I know whether, if, if I'm tired today, I must respect myself first and foremost and yes if I'm tired I go back home sleep it off if I don't feel like training which I normally train four or five times a week because my body is used to that if I don't feel like training I do not train I we, we're definitely going to be talking about how to tackle the, the changes in our body we're going to come back to that definitely but but I want to switch to core because core you are the youngest one around the table. <laughs> um, but you are going through a phase that I had never heard of in my life. And I appear to yeah. have skipped it because of my experience, which is... Perimenopause. I mean, I had no idea about this phase either. I was totally uneducated about that aspect of it. And I went to my doctor complaining about fatigue, complaining about body aches, my joints, my muscles recovery time after workouts and, and I train five, six times a week and the recovery time was horrendous. So much so that I just go in feeling sore, work through it. And the fatigue afterwards was insane. Then I started with night sweats. Um, that I think scared me most of all because you just wake up in an absolute pool of sweat. Nobody prepares you for that. And women need to be prepared for that. You know, and I went to the doctor and I, I spoke to him and I said, this is happening. My periods started coming every two months. This was last year. So uh, he said, you're probably going through perimenopause. And perimenopause is the period before a full menopause. That's right. And yeah. to, qualify, to qualify for a full yeah. menopause, you have to have not had a period for about a year. Or, or that's, that's kind they of say. They, they estimate. Yeah. Huh? I think I'm heading down that road. It's been 75 days. Oh, wow, you're counting the days. I am. I have an app. And so I keep track because it's so, it became so erratic that I needed to, even when you take into consideration certain things that I do in life, even just traveling, you don't always want to, you know, be stuck. For so, sure. So that's, um, that's it, where you're at. Yeah, that's where I'm at in my journey. Okay. Um, I'm not on any medication. I'm only taking femoral. Actually, I'm taking femoral rejuvenate. That's what was offered to me. And I'm going to come to that in a second as well, because this is a massive topic. But before we do that, I'm going to come to the oldest one in the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mariella, I'm so sorry. But you are a little bit older than us. I'm what? 58 years old. I'm and much older. proud of much it. Older. Proud of it, girlfriend. Yes, happy to be alive. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We're also going to talk about menopause from a psychological point of view in a few minutes too, but what's your journey? What, where are you at with menopause? Well, I think my journey was very tough for many reasons. First of all, I think that, and I think this is something that we can expand on if you like uh, later on, but the truth is that when we're talking about we don't learn about menopause, 
Um, I think we do learn about menopause when we're watching our mothers, if our mothers are around, when we're growing up. In the background, because we will be young and we won't really care much about at that time, at that stage in our lives. But we have this memory, for sure, of our mothers going through it. Um, but I very clearly remember that the lifestyle of women when I was very young is different to the lifestyle today. When I started going through menopause, First of all, I would like to just say, uh, uh, apologize to the people who were around me at that time. <laughs> well I'm done. Really yes. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to kill you all. <laughs> <laughs> and that stopped. You were out of that phase. That's cool. We're, That's we're relieved by that. That's good. <laughs> it was very tough because my life, first of all, and still is very busy. So I had young kids, I had a household, full-time job. I worked in, in, in my clinic, and so uh, my clinic, I was still very nice, uh, therapist. Um, but I also was presenting a program. I was very busy. I think I was, I mean, very, very busy, very all the time, very busy. Um, so you have to function. And it would be very weird that, for example, I'd be talking to you now, as I am doing right now, and all of a sudden I'd be just to become totally, completely wet, full of sweat. Or, for example, I wake up in the morning, I do not suffer from, from being depressed or down. I'm quite a positive thinking person. I'd wake up with this really low mood. Basically, it is PMSing all the time times to 200. Yes. You know? I agree and it's with that. very That's hard. True to explain PMSing, it's horrible to hear people going, you know, going on about, even when you're, you're not going through menopause, oh, you're going through, menop you're going through PMS, you, you, you know, it's just before your period. You know, it's very frustrating because you don't just brush it off in that way. So it's not enough just to say, oh, okay, you're going through menopause, you know? No, it's, it, it, and, and menopause is very hard because everything is changing in your body. And you're all of a sudden realizing that although you are your your brain and you want to do things, you want to enjoy life, you still want to live a good life. You're still very young because really and truly, late forties, fifties today is still very young. You know, um, at fifty, I started running marathons. You know, I met you. You you were one of the people who really gave me some some good motivation to do that, and uh, and I and it really helped. But the truth is, it is very hard because you begin to realize I'm changing and it feels awful. And what am I going to do about it? And the truth is, some people understand and can be very supportive, but some people don't understand As, enough. Especially when cannot, they're younger, yes. when you're in a group of friends, when they're younger than you. And I'm always And around, you got enough. an early menopause, perimenopause, like yeah. myself, and they wouldn't understand the meaning of a brain or rather, fog. Or, or maybe they brain wouldn't understand, is, they wouldn't empathize. They yes, wouldn't exactly. get no. it. It's yes. not because they don't care. It's the empathy. You're right. They just don't so empathize. When you, when yeah. you can't... When you all of a sudden stop thinking a brain fog, right? A brain fog. I must, I must insist on mentioning this. It's like, hello, they go, keep on going, hello, Moira, what's wrong, what's wrong? I know what I'm going through. Yes. I understand my body, but please understand what I'm going through. Look, 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 let me get rid of the shine. There you go. I, I, I core, I love the fact that you're actually embracing this show and having a hot flush as we speak. I know. But here's the funny thing. And there's so many parts of this. We're just going to let Open you... Open the fridge. We just, <laughs> can I stick my head in the get freezer in for a few minutes, please? <laughs> there's so many aspects of this that we have already touched on and we could talk about. But I, first of all, I want to talk about uh, how you treat menopause. Because there are 73% of women, uh, when they were questioned, never treated their symptoms at all. Wow. Some people don't 73 need to, uh, Let's be very fair. Well, well this, is, are, this, this is where some, I'm going to come to, uh, yeah. because everybody is affected by the menopause in a different way. Yes, and I think it's a very personal experience. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't and never got hot flushes, but I had other... I had the, early, the pain. Don't I don't get them often. <laughs> but when you get oh them... But when I get them, everyone notices because your face kind of goes red. Yes. You start with the sheen of sweat. 
my whole body just feels like your back is probably everything yeah, and it's, it's very very really... common i mean this is one of the for me one of the reasons i didn't realize i was having menopause is because i didn't have hot flashes and you talked about uh, watching our mums go through it and it was the one thing that my mum had so when i didn't get any hot flashes i was like well i don't have the menopause but what for my experience was that i as soon as i got the result mine was not possibly was not the same as other people's because I walked in I was suspected I had menopause I had the blood test my GP said you are way into menopause and I just went give me the drugs <laughs> just get, I had already started taking femoral which was is brilliant and we'll talk about that as well but but I just said I want HRT and she said are you sure you haven't even asked me any questions and I said I want my life yes, back and yes. I don't care yes I, I so look, how did it affect you what did you do uh, what did what did you how did you all, treat can yourself? I just say this because I think it's very very important I'm on HRT and I will explain the the effects that I have but please if anybody decides uh, to go on HRT you need to go on HRT very well educated, not filled with fear and comments of people. Don't do this because I heard, because they say, who's they? I always do that. When people go, they say, I go, who's they? Can I have their names and addresses? Because <laughs> they say, who's yeah, they? Yeah, you're right. You yeah. know, um, get the right information and follow up with checkups. So I'm on HRT. When I took HRT, I... I How I, long have you been on HRT? I've been... Uh -huh. I, let me tell you the process of going on HRT. Because I went to the to to my gynae and I also went to the doctor. And I also discussed, obviously, because I'm in the field and I have colleagues who are psychiatrists. And I discussed, okay, what medication is given to women during menopause? Be very careful because... Uh, doctors will prescribe antidepressants. They will pre prescribe. Why? They did. They did. They, they did prescribe antidepressants. One doctor actually told me, here, I gave my wife this because I needed to survive this journey. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, um, seriously? No. Yes, yes. yes. So be very aware. And I'm not saying, let me also make it very clear. Uh, and I'm not saying... Sometimes people do need to take antidepressants. Sometimes people do need to take medication for anxiety. However, you need to look at all your options. And that's what I did. I looked at what does it mean if you do take medication? What does it mean if you do take anything to help you sleep? Because I wasn't sleeping and I had to function in the morning. So when you're up at three in the morning to six in the morning, it's very hard because you need to function. It's a, it's a very serious situation. So you get all the information, and when you get all the information and you're well informed, then you can make the right decision. So I decided on HRT. When I started HRT, within three days, I completely, within three or four days, it was like, you know, I felt like, you know that statue of Buddha that goes, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was back to that being grounded. Him. I was yeah. back to being 30 years old. Not the way I look, but the way I feel. You know, I was back to feeling... No, it was all hormones. So my hormones began balancing out. I've been taking... Uh, I, I started my menopause at a very normal age. I was about 52. Very, very normal. 52 about. Not too early, not too late. Um... Uh, but I started taking uh, my, my HRT when I was about 52, 53. I'm now 58. In the last year, I believe, I started taking a lower dose. When my gynae suggested and told me, because eventually you do have to come off HRT, when she suggested um, that I come off HRT, I gave her such a look she was afraid, so she said, <laughs> let's lower the dose. Um, uh, and it's, it's, it's very good. It's lower... What I do suggest, but if you just take HRT and that's it, and you do nothing else to support yourself in getting older, because it is a journey getting older, um, and it's in, in a journey on many levels, not just physically, it's a journey on recognizing that your life is changing and you are changing. Even, you know, if you're very excited about life, but this, you are changing. Exactly that. So I started running I did mar half marathons I did four grades but not everyone I... has that your type no, your you level can do of yoga. energy you can do pilates that, but we need be to respect healthy. that but yes, even, yes. even I don't run anymore I can't uh -huh, forget it uh -huh.
So what you've just mentioned there, of course, is not just that our hormones are affected. Our hormones are affected. What I didn't realize is that when I took my, my blood test, it's not just your estrogen levels, it's tos testosterone and a whole bunch of other yes. changes in our body. It's not just the hormones. It's also other factors. It's our energy levels that are affected yes, by magnesium, yes. potassium. You know, it, we've got femoral in front of us because we're all taking this. Even on HRT, I'm taking it as well because it's a natural supplement for the things that our body is not processing in the way that it used to. So, so let me start by saying that it's important before anything else to get your doctor to do you a hormone profile to know the levels of estrogen, etc. Absolutely. And then, I mean, and that's we a need simple to... blood test. Yes. It's not scary. Yes. You just have a blood test, uh -huh. and the to results know come back. The levels. And of mine your... was like, "Whoa, you're in the menopause, girlfriend." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now I was into getting the, I mean. Stay away from medicine, get all the, the natural. natural. And that is a good uh, yes, approach. But I was I was trying to avoid anything to do with HRT because I, I had this thing in my head. I want to go all natural, all natural as much as possible. Now, I could not go totally natural, although I started immediately with Femarel, which worked, worked um my body responded to mm -mm. femoral, so you need to see what is best for your body, for, for your sure. system. We're not the same. I believe there's still to be, um, scientists need to, to work on something really tailor-made for each and every, we're all different, so we can't all take um, the, same thing. the same thing, but femoral worked for me, the vitamins, I my diet, I, I eat very, very well, although I'm a vegetarian and now turning into vegan. So I, I do see and notice that certain products are vegan. It's important for us vegans to, to be able to, you know, take what is necessary. necessary. And um, I, it took a long while for me to find the right medication it took a long while because the hot sweats, you know, they, they were coming and going and I, you need to know the right dosage for, for yourself. But yes, I'm happy. I'm back into training. I'm having a normal life. Today, I still meet people who are really still um, um, unsure and maybe slightly on the negative side when it comes to HRT. But I do I, take but that's HRT okay. as well. But that's okay, you know, because some people, first of all, can handle menopause, going through menopause without HRT. And to be honest with you, I admire them in a way because it's like, it's better, no? If, if you they can, can handle lead it, a good quality you know? of life, I yes, mean, why it's not? fine. Um, uh, but I don't, what I think people need to be very careful of is don't listen to what people tell I mean, listen to what people tell you, yes, but go and find out for, for yourself, yourself what is best yes. for you. you know? Well, see, this is cool. This is where I think you're probably in the best position of all of us because I, I don't know about you ladies, but I'd never heard the word perimenopause. I didn't know that there was a phase before the menopause. I was over the moon when I, to when I was told I was on the menopause, but you, you are there you're already taking supplements for perimenopause and you're yeah. obviously thinking about what's going to happen when your 75 days turns into a year and someone turns sure. around and says, you know I what, you are menopausal. I think of that every day because every day I take my femoral, it really helps alleviate the symptoms. So, and this is, um, these are menopause symptoms. These are perimenopause symptoms, but now I'm assuming that it will now trans, you know, send into full menopause. And it's time for me to go to back to the gynae and get my bloods done and get that checked out and and see what my options are. Because as uh, Mariella and Moira said, it's hard. You hear so much from people. Oh, no, don't do HRT. Oh, no, don't do this. As a, as a myself personally, I continuously look for the uh, more natural. holistic, natural yes. way. Uh, but if it doesn't work, I'll be like you, Trudy, and I'll be like, give me all the drugs. <laughs> but... <laughs> Okay. I swear I will. I'll, okay. I'll go in there and I'll say, please just see what you can do because, you know, I need something else to take that edge off. But I'm I, at the moment, I'm not there yet. It's working. As long as I keep it all up, the magnesium, potassium, my vitamin supplements and the femoral, 
There but, is, but uh, there is something know. about uh, when people take medication, and I've noticed it even in other situations when people are depressed or anxious, whatever. People need to understand that because you take that pill, it's going to help you. Yes. But it is not the only solution. Lifestyle, approach to life, yes. dealing with situations, learning how to deal maybe with a heightened level of anxiety, a heightened level of, of for example, this brain fog. It's so, it's so, I so appreciate you talking about the brain fog because when you are very busy and you're doing a million things and all of a sudden you get a blank moment, it's very frustrating and very, very worrying. But for me, I really appreciated that you mentioned it. Remembering people's imagine, names. Imagine being on stage in front of a live TV audience. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It's, it, it causes all this anxiety inside you. How are you going to which explain? Which makes it worse. You know? it, it, which, yeah. it, which comes to my next question, which is, and leads on from what you each of you have just said, which is the worst symptom for you? Because menop menopause has a <laughs> Ask massive... my husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> oh, but menopause has a massive, massive range of symptoms that are different for everyone. We just talked about that. How I, why I took HRT is because I still run and the, the joint pain and the muscle pain was insane. I couldn't deal with it. I, that was what was keeping me awake yes, at night. Yes, I never yes. had night sweats, but that pain, nobody had told nobody. me. But for you, Cor, where you are at the moment, and I'll come to these ladies in a second and, mm -hmm. and her son and her <laughs> husband. But at the moment, what's the one symptom that you're most dreading or most frustrated by? Ooh, it would have to be brain fog because... Again, like Moira was saying, when I when I was on air every morning, having to remember details of certain bands, names of the singers, the drummers, the songs themselves, <laughs> who who that person was that sent a message that I just checked three seconds ago, but it was gone. And and I found myself continuously trying to explain myself. Sorry, brain frog. Sorry, brain fog. And it's it's hard to deal with that when you're. Somebody who has to, yes. like you said, on stage, remembering your lines, remembering Memory what you're supposed loss. to. It's, it's, it's very hard. Was this the worst for you? Well, you see, I'm, I'm an old school TV host, so to speak. You know, I can't, I do not use a teleprompter. I just memorize everything. That's how I present. And that's how I'm used to. And I can memorize a full show without looking at a script. Wow. Well, I used to. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And um, a live audience, like um, uh, a three-day festival like Musica Musica, the one I hosted lately, you know, I had to memorize all the sketches. Yes. So it wasn't Jeez. easy at all. And I, I probably have to do that again. Yeah. So my fear is that because a sketch, when you, you are meant to make people laugh naturally and you have to get into character, it's not as easy as that anymore. I you have, have to, to be so so present. sure, so yes. spot on the and, character. And quick. And, yes, and quick. And that is my fear. That is my big problem with my work. Yes. You? Timing is so important. Which it was, was a breeze. It was a breeze. There was nothing that <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I just I'm thought glad I'd it ruin your show. Glad <laughs> it didn't, it didn't kill the, your personality and your, your sense of humor. No, to be honest with you, I would. I mean, I for for me, what I what I found the toughest is that I'm a very I'm a person who uh, I, I'm very I, I mean I'm very sensitive and I get affected with things in life. However, I have a very big positive drive. You know, my my the way I perceive things and the way I work on myself constantly is I always find a positive, meaningful way of looking at things. So I, it became very worrying for me that I had to wake up. I have always a very supportive role in various aspects of my life. So uh, when you wake up and your mood for no reason is 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 not good. Uh, so I would have to use triple the amount of energy in my job, in my work, in dealing with whatever I have to deal with because of my mood. So when I, this is why I decided finally to go on HRT and this is where it's, it's confirmed that 
and it's a fact, it's a scientific fact, that hormones do not only affect whether you get your period or not or whether you're going through menopause, uh, hormones affect your mood. Hormones are the basis Absolutely. of your mood. So uh, it, that is very, very important. So quality of life depends very much. I could have handled the sweats, the the body image, the tiredness. You do things and you push and, you and get everything. Through it. If your mind is in the right place. But when you begin to wake up and your mood is not, or your positive thinking is beginning to be affected, I had a problem with that. And for me, that was very important for me to address. New Max Stack Mascara. So a third of all women don't find out or don't seek any information about menopause before they arrive there. I was one of those women. It, the whole thing took me by surprise. But you're talking, you've just described there, something that is going to impact not just you, but everybody around yes. you. Yes. Did you know about menopause? Did I you knew. know what I was knew. coming? I knew about menopause, obviously, because I'm into psychology. I've studied these things. I knew about perimenopause. I knew why, because I've had clients and you work with people. So I knew. And I, and I was very aware of what was going on with me. And I was very aware. I was very aware also of my mood changes, of my perception in life, of what I felt like doing, my level of motivation, my level of how I viewed myself. I mean, I was very aware. Why? Because I'm in this field, so maybe that made me a bit more aware. But I knew how important it was that I address it. You know, it's very important to address it. Do not ignore it. Do not get too influenced. Yes, listen to people. You know, you're listening to me, to Moira, and, and, and you're in perimenopause stage. So it's very, very important that you listen to the different stages. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, do get professional help and try and get professional help from the right people, you know. And it's it's not a bad idea to even get professional help, not just on the medical side. Address it holistically, you know, and inform the people who are close to you. I am going through changes right now, so you're going to have to to deal with this. Um, did did you? No, but no. Did you do any research before? Did you know what was coming? No. Not at all. I was one of those who didn't accept that I would be going through menopause. One of those, oh, I'm into sports, I eat healthy, I'm active, I'm a positive person. It won't be hitting me. <laughs> I but thought it, I was no, special. No, no. I'm with it's you. I'm true. with you. That's that's a positive that's way of thinking, thinking about it. Hit. No, I it thought it would hit me. me. No. She was yeah. trying to manifest that it yes. just skips her over. Oops, yes. forgot you, Moira. <laughs> You know, but, no, yeah. me, me, me and Moira. Oh, that's Moira. Leave her me alone. In denial, yeah. totally. <laughs> but, so you yeah. hadn't prepared yourself, but you, no. you I hadn't. hadn't prepared myself until the doctor made me aware that it could be a perimenopausal symptoms that I'm going through. And then I bought a book uh, by Macy Hill. It's called Perimenopause Power. And she also has one called Period Power. So anyone who's not at the stage of perimenopause, it's a very interesting read. But Perimenopause Power explains everything. When you read this book, you kind of go, ah, oh, that's what I've been feeling. Okay. That's why I'm feeling this. This is why I woke up in the morning and I feel so down. This is why I sweat into my mattress last night. This is why I was in the middle of having dinner with friends well, and my face understand. went beet red. You feel, you feel a bit you better, feel don't you? Yes. A bit more in control. A bit, that's it. Yeah. Bravo. But, uh, but this comes, more in control. This comes back to the very point that I decided we had to have this conversation. And that is, if it's something that affects, whether you're in our position where we're like, this is not going to happen to me, I'm going to skip menopause, it's not going to happen to me, I'm going to get to 90, yeah. 93. No, no, but, but, no, no. but At all. it's still but, shocking when it happens. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But knowing that you're not the only one, and women are all, every single woman, four billion women are going to be affected in one way or another by this transition. Yes. Why don't we have more communication and yeah. conversations about it? Why do we not do this more often? You're probably the first person that I'm going to come to with that, but 
I think, Why? Uh, well, first Why? of all, you need to understand that uh, this has a lot to do with periods, pregnancies. Uh, it doesn't affect men. So let's be very aware about this. Be very, very aware. And I don't want to judge men and I don't want to put men down. But the truth is, you don't have the whole population affected by it. If you did, trust me, it would be but a different story. But we have half story. the population. You have half the population. Uh, but women have learned how to get on with it, you know. Mm. I mean, women get I a agree. period every month. Yes. Women suffer every month. And I, We're don't, tough miss, uh, I don't miss not no, getting a period. Do I. I mean, I'm a bit crazy. People look at me and think I'm it. mad because yeah. I miss. I'm, I was very, very sad. <laughs> I can't get so, over but this. But why? Why were you she sad? She said it before. I and was she sad. Said, very sad. In sad? fact, I'm 58 and I stopped getting my period at the age of 56. And, 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 and I, last I, that I was, long? No, 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 I was sad. I sad. Can't, I can't believe she's actually saying that she was sad and she misses, she misses her period. I've she never heard much anyone physical. say it. That's how much I, I like many other women, have yes. learned how to get on with it. Uh huh. I uh -huh. get on with it. I, I came off because the my pill. Because mood allows me to get on with yes, it. Yes, exactly. My positive thinking allows me to get on with whatever I face in life. So that's, that's why my mood affected me the most. Well, two points there, because you, I, I myself came off the pill and immediately I came off the pill. I didn't have another period. And the one thing I said to my lady doctor was, I wish I had known because I could have said goodbye last period. I'm like you. I'm so happy, <laughs> I'm so happy. that I don't have, I'm I like, can't wait. Bring it's it It's 75 on. days with nothing so far. <laughs> and I'm really keeping my fingers crossed for 365. <laughs> Please. <laughs> We're cheering you on. No, yeah. I was Thank you. Thank you. But Mariella, <laughs> you also just mentioned there about previously about you having been affected by depression but or, or mood swings. No, I wasn't or, depressed. Or, but I was, okay, let me rephrase no, that. No, I wasn't depressed. But, but don't you think if that was somebody else who's going into the, a perimenopause situation, that it's just happen, huh? knowing that it's coming, being able to talk about it like this would be empowering because... I think women do talk about it uh, through the... Nobody spoke to me. But when you I know asked, how they talk about it? You know how? Oh, I'm feeling so terrible. I'm going to my yeah, exactly. It's, it's a negative, Pussed negative. Off. And you get yeah. the feedback of, oh, really? Move on. There isn't this discussion and, and in-depth. And especially, I would love to see more of a discussion, not necessarily just with women. I would like men to be better educated about how menopause affects their Yes, they'll their probably body. end up talking about their mon menopausal experience. Men are very because frustrated because when women are going through menopause, yes. their sexual drive yes. goes down. Yes, exactly. That's when they want to talk about it, you know. I, I, I feel like if I have to hear one more man say, oh, what's the matter? Are you hormonal? Or what's the matter? I'm going through the change. That makes me see red because it's ignorant. Whether you're kidding or not, it's ignorant. If I joke about it, it's okay. And I know that's a double standard and I don't care because this is something that's so personal to each of our journeys. And if they're in a relationship with someone, because if you have a partner who's going through perimenopause and then menopause and then postmenopause, you certainly need to be on board with what she's feeling. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to wonder why she wants to kill you every <laughs> fortnight. I mean, it's it's a, it's a, I, I'm exaggerating there, but you do sometimes get so frustrated. You? <laughs> you know, you know, menopausal you have to jokes explain it. are the best. Menopausal they are. jokes. They're well, when, the best. when we tell them. When us women joke about it, but men. It's not something I feel oh, well. that should be thrown at us lightly because it's something that we're all going to go through. Like Mariella said, some will ease through it better than others, but some won't. And God forbid my husband didn't understand it because I explain it to him. I explain why I take femoral every morning and when I miss one, I panic because I know, oh, I might get a hot flush, you know. But he understands. And I'll apologize later. If I've snapped at him, I'm sorry, it wasn't me. It was my hormones. I apologize. I shouldn't have been that way. And he'll say, it's okay. I thought so. I thought so. He, he automatically now knows. I'm coming to you, Maury, because it's something 
that these two ladies just said was that prior to having menopause, they would have had, you, us women have periods. So we would have had a surge or a dip in hormones every single month and we would have been emotional and maybe yes. angry every single Extra month. Extra sensitive. So this isn't yeah. actually anything new. We've been experiencing... This is constant PMS. Experiencing, yes. exactly. So we've been experiencing this sort of thing for the, our entire lives. It's just that it all comes at once and we're going through a whole transition. So how do you explain that to a partner? How do you get them on board? And in your case, how did you do that? Well... We, we spend a lot of time together and he noticed a change, even with my energy levels. I was always full of energy. Luckily, he's the quiet, reserved type, stay home. So when husband. she forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was happened okay. before. He let it so slide. She calls him a so different he, name. <laughs> so so he, he, he has seen this change, but... It worked for, for him the better because he, he used to look at me, oh, when are you going to calm down? When are you going to, you slow know, relax, down. slow down, stay at home with me, you know? So, yes, he, he has embraced in a way all this change. Um, however, however, the sex levels... Your sexual the, drive. Sexual Your sex drive, drive has changed. Although... Since we discuss it more and more, you know, it made us closer. And he's the type of person who doesn't mind growing old together. That is very, very it's important. important. Absolutely. We can't keep fighting yeah. age and scared to show, you know, okay, I respect if you I respect the fact that you don't you don't feel comfortable in saying how old you are. It doesn't matter. I I'm comfortable in saying, hey, I'm 51, I'm growing old. Yes, I'm still here, I'm happy. But um, to, to, to accept and move on and yes, why not? We're growing old. Let's grow old together, healthily, knowing that we are going through changes. Even men are going through changes. Yes. They are. Yes. Of course and they we are. we need yes. to be aware of yes. that yes. as well. Absolutely, because of course we have the male menopause yes. and their hormones change as well. But he's, did, he's, did you... he's more grumpy, by the way, <laughs> more than ever. <laughs> Did you ever feel any embarrassment at all in saying, I'm going through the menopause? I'm assuming that you didn't because you've spoken out, you've been very vocal about... I, I wouldn't say it in that way, so calm, you know, I'm going through yeah. <laughs> menopause. Really? Yes, sometimes fatigue was one of, Horrible. apart from brain fog, fatigue, yeah. when I have all this stuff to do and I, I just... You feel like um, so frustrated in your own body that you can't manage to do all those things, multitasking like I used oh, to. That's so true. So is it embarrassment or frustration? Because a lot of women won't I, talk I just, about it. I just showed my No, I, I, I did feel yeah. it. And my husband is 10 years younger than me. Ah. Good girl. So, Good girl. So, uh, <laughs> but I did something I think that was really, it's true, not everybody can do it, but they can do something different. But I think what I did was therapeutically fantastic what I did. Huh? I started running half marathons. I started training for the grid. So in the, in the period of time where I realized that I was getting older, that things are changing, I decided to give a... I, I've always been sportive, so I didn't start sports at 50. I've always been a sportive person. But I went even more to a challenge. And that was very therapeutic. Um, uh, so whilst that on one hand, because my husband is, is, is 10 years younger and the people we stay with, if they're with, with his friends, they are also younger. Um, in fact, the women now are going through menopause. I'm really enjoying sitting there <laughs> and watching it. You know what? You know what? If, if really? you, can, you can cut this bit. But when you were going, you're, you were about to say, you know what I did? You know what I did to my husband? I was dying to say, you drugged him. You <laughs> drugged him, that's <laughs> it. Just put him out of his misery while you're I going. I can tell you, ladies, yeah. <laughs> that bit is not going to be cut. Um, <laughs> no, don't, because of my role. Don't. But, but, so... <laughs> Because were, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but you, so in other words, you combated any embarrassment that would be associated with age and menopause, and the two go hand in hand. 
by being fit, because I'm going to come to you, Cor, yeah. you are just coming into this. How open are you about saying, I'm in perimenopause, wow, the menopause is about to hit? I, I'm super comfortable saying it. Um, I learned to be very comfortable early on, as soon as I started getting symptoms, because I had to communicate with my personal trainer and explain to him that sometimes I needed a longer recovery time after certain workouts. And that was so frustrating for me because I went from breezing through these workouts and having very little recovery time between to having an aching body full on, like you said, joints, muscles, everything aching. I felt like a 90 year old woman sometimes when I'd get off the sofa in the evening. It would be like, get up the sofa, go to bed. And I'd feel like, what is wrong with me? Again, my energy levels. Whereas I could multitask and do 20,000 things in one day, no issue, and then go out at night and still enjoy yeah, myself. Exactly. Now it was, I did some things in the morning, worked out, and that was it. I was done. Can I, I ask was you, so you, you just mentioned this. I have never asked anybody this, but I get up in the middle of the night to go to the loo and my oh. legs really hurt. My feet are... Do you know that yeah. swollen feet are a symptom of Is menopause? Because I got diagnosed as having plantar fasciitis and all sorts of things yeah, and my trainers wouldn't fit my trainers no longer fit me wow. and I was told you need bigger trainers no I didn't I needed to deal with why my feet were were swollen that's bloating well, it only you, happened in my feet I can though. give you a, a tip for that so I suffered from plantar fasciitis and then sometimes you'd get these bloated feet at night um the greatest thing before you get out of bed is write the alphabet with your feet Put your feet out straight and write the alphabet in the air with your feet. And this stretches your feet enough that when you get out of bed, you don't have that foot pain. I'm doing I'm that right now. In, this is I amazing. You, I slip it. That, that, but that helps you get out of cushions. bed without that pain oh, at first. But, 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 but this the blood flowing. I have the same thing. You get out of bed and ache? Yes, yeah. my oh, feet really bad hey, sometimes. It was just me. So it's the slippers. If you're I not, invested in good slippers. No. And you I have just to, walk. yeah. I fly love, out of them. I love walking barefooted. Of course you I do, love, I do. You're like a force of nature. I, it's, I love it. I, I love it. You of, fly out I, of bed. She flies out of bed. Don't give her another coffee. Please. No, <laughs> no, no, more, no more coffee or wine <laughs> for Mariella. Listen, we're going to wrap this up because we could talk about this for ages and I think that we probably need to talk about it again because we haven't touched on the psychological impact. We haven't touched on the long-term impact. We haven't talked... Talk, talked in detail about the impact on the people around us and also our bodies. And the, I mean, it is just a massive topic. But what I do feel encouraged by is that we've started to talk about it. And we've got four women around the table all going through this process and saying, actually, you know what? I'm happy to talk about it. So I think we're going to do this again. But to, to round it off for now, I'm going to come to you last, Marilla, because you talk the most. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start with you, Moira. For anybody that's going into this phase, in this phase, or approaching this phase, what's your word of encouragement? Accept, accept the change. Treat yourself individually, not like others. Test, do the, the hormone profile, do what's necessar necessary, and see what works best for you. And yes, if you, had, if you once had that clean body and... Um, you had that really nice figure that you were proud of. Just be comfortable in your own skin, you know. It's another phase in life. And yes, we should be positive and lucky that we're still here. That's right. Enjoying That's our right. children and maybe, why not, becoming grandmothers one day. <laughs> I just feel if you're going through or you feel like you might be going through perimenopause, that you definitely should go get your blood profile done to see if you are going through some sort of hormonal changes and then make yourself aware. Speak to other women. Don't be shy. Don't treat it as a taboo subject or something to be ashamed of. Uh, open up the way we did today because I think it's one of the most helpful things you can do. And then go see your GP and ask her how it suits you to alleviate your symptoms. See what works for you. I think it's really yeah. important that we're not embarrassed about talking about it. Exactly. We we're all we should all feel blessed that we're still here and we're going through these changes in the first place. Absolutely. That's why I like saying my age. Yeah. Because absolutely. I appreciate yeah. being yeah. here healthy and well. That's why I like saying my age. Um, I just I just have one simple, very simple thing to say to anybody, not just menopause. Listen to your body, it talks to you. Listen to your body because your body is talking to you. 
And, and sometimes we do not listen to our own body. So when we have aches, pains, changes, it means our body is telling us something needs to change or adapt. It's more about adaptation rather than change. Ladies, uh, my word of advice for anybody is talk. Is to, Coming back to what you were saying, what you've said before and what you said is talk, talk, talk. This is going to happen to every single yes. woman on the planet in one way or another. It's not something we can avoid. And because we can't avoid it, we should embrace it. And yeah. we should find, as we said, that what's right for us. But talk about it, talk about it, and talk about it. My morning starts here with an experience that's unforgettable. A precise roast and a generous crema. Taste the unforgettable Nespresso.